Jared from D-Lab and today I got a neat how-to video for you to test some of those junk box milliamp meters that you have laying around. This test will verify the operation and the accuracy of your panel meter so that you can use it for the right application. For the task you're going to need a general purpose DC variable power supply. In this case we've got a little Heath kit IP18. It's 1 to 15 volt, 0 to 500 milliamp current regulated. And then you're going to need a nice uh, precision milliamp meter that we're going to run in line. In this case, a little Beckman 310. I've got it set at 0 to 200 milliamp scale. And then you're going to need a resistor. Now, this is a 100 ohm resistor. It's going to go in series with the power supply to limit current and protect the meters in case you do something wrong. Now one thing I'd highly recommend, do not do this test using a battery or a power supply that's of high current because if you mess up, you're going to smoke your meter. Over here, there's a couple meters we're going to test. We'll start off first with a Halicrafter 0 to 150 milliamp meter. So if you take a look at the little diagram here that I've posted, you'll see why I use the 100 ohm resistor in series. Since we're dealing with a current loop and I want to protect my meter under test, I use the 100 ohm resistor. So if I applied, say, 5 volts DC to the circuit, the 100 ohm resistor is going to limit my current at 50 milliamps. And if I were to go up from there, the resistor would continue to protect my meter movement. That's why you always want to use a resistor in series when you do this test. Okay? So here we are, the meter's hooked up, power supply's turned down. You can see I'm already drawing about six milliamps. It's because this power supply doesn't go to zero, okay? But I'm really not concerned about that. Now I'm gonna bring the voltage up and watch the meter movement. Remember, this is zero to 150 mils. I'm gonna take it up to 100 mils or so. And look at my meter. I'm actually pulling only 16 milliamps. That's because a lot of these meters even though they have a 150 milliamp scale, they are much lower than that because they expect that you're going to put a shunt in line. Okay? So let's take it about full scale and see what we got going here. So there's about full scale. And if you look, I got 24.5 mils. So this is a full scale 0 to 25 milliamp meter. So remember that. If you're going to use this in a transmitter or some other purpose, Make sure to put the proper current shunt in line so you don't damage the meter. All right, the next meter we'll test. This is out of a Globe Scout transmitter. Now you can take a look, you'll see it has two scales, zero to 15 mils and zero to 150 mils. So you know for sure this cannot be a zero to 150 milliamp full scale meter because a zero 15 wouldn't do you any good. So let's take her up full scale and I bet you'll find that it's actually full scale of 15 mils. In this case, about 16, okay? But you can see why they had the two scales on here. This is just to give you a little more information about why meters are scaled the way they are. Now here is a 0 to 300 milliamp meter out of an old military piece of equipment. Now this one is actually 0 to 300 mils all by himself. Now watch when I turn this up. Remember, I'm current limiting my power supply. So here, I can only get about 150 mils. You see about 179 mils. I can't go full scale. That's because of my current limiting resistor, all right? So I'm gonna add another resistor in parallel. We'll knock that down to 50 ohms in series. And let's see what that does. So you can see, now I have uh, 200 ohm resistors in parallel, so 50 ohms in our little series circuit. Here's my meter. I'm going to bring it up. Let's go to about uh, 100 mils on the meter. Here she comes. So there's about 100. You can see it's about 111 though on the meter. So we've got a little bit of an accuracy issue. Not bad though. So full scale. There it is, about 300. And we got about 346. So if you're going to use this meter, you can see that the accuracy is a little bit off. So you'll have to adjust your current shunt accordingly. Well, there you have it. Another little tech tip from D-Lab. 
This is really handy if you're working on a transmitter circuit and you need to put in a meter. Or, let's say you have an audio amplifier. You want to monitor the current through those tubes. So you want to pick the right type of meter to go in line. But you really don't know what you got in that junk box. Follow this procedure. You can't go wrong. You won't damage your meter. And you'll be off and running. Hope you enjoyed the video.